1833, the British government, influenced by humanitarian, economic, political, and other considerations, decided to make slavery illegal throughout the British Empire with effect from 1st August 1834. But there was a catch. The now free captives were not permitted to leave the plantations. Captives would be required to serve an additional six years before they were completely freed. This period was called apprenticeship. Apprenticeship was created to mainly serve the white planters who, after slavery ended, were paid a total of 20 million pounds for losing their property. Apprenticeship gave the planters breathing space to find other labor sources and was designed to prepare the apprentices and the colony for full freedom. This was the time Damon was living in. In Essequibo, the former enslaved Africans now called apprentices protested the new scheme. Work stopped occasionally during the week from Sunday, August 3rd. On Sunday, Charles Bean, the owner of Plantation Richmond, joined with other planters to kill 65 pigs belonging to the apprentices. This act was just one of many by the planters that attempted to keep the captive workforce dependent on them. On Saturday, August 9th, 1834, the labor situation took a dramatic turn, with apprentices gathering in the Trinity Churchyard at La Belle Alliance. The apprentices could not imagine that they had been freed, but were still required to work the plantation for wages they could not question. The planters called for troops, who surrounded the churchyard. Damon, who was an apprentice at Richmond, along with other apprentices, raised a white flag with a black cross through it as a symbol of their freedom and independence. More and more apprentices from the plantations between Richmond and Devonshire Castle gathered in the churchyard stopping work, convinced that Bean and other plantation owners were trying to steal their freedom. They demanded to see the governor and refused to return to work. Governor Carmichael Smith arrived on Monday 11th August and the crowd quickly and peacefully obeyed his orders to end the seizure of the churchyard. The flag was pulled down. The governor addressed the workers the next day at Plantation Richmond. He explained the apprenticeship period, arrested the leaders of the demonstration, and ordered the rest back to work. Damon, by this time, was being referred to as the captain, and hence leader of the unrest. He and others were taken to Georgetown, tried, and found guilty of rebellion. None of these men had threatened the planters or their property and had not attacked anyone. Four of them were sentenced to terms of imprisonment and severe floggings, while two were sentenced to transportation. Damon was sentenced to death. At noon on Monday, October 13, 1834, Damon was hung on a scaffold specially erected in front of the freshly opened public buildings now the Parliament Building. Damon's peaceful resistance has left a lasting impression on the people of Essequibo. This is reflected in the fact that Damon has not one, but two structures honoring his stand for freedom in Pomeroon Supernam, Region 2. The first is Damon's Cross. Damon's Cross is located in the Labelle Alliance Cemetery. The white cross marks the old Trinity churchyard where Damon and the other apprentices assemble. The second structure honoring Damon's place as a freedom fighter is the 1834 monument, commonly known as the Statue of Damon or Damon's Monument, located in Anna Regina. The Statue of Damon was designed by Mr. Ivor Thom, who also designed the 1823 monument in Georgetown. The nine-foot-tall bronze memorial depicts Damon in a giant chair, weighs three tons, and rests on a concrete plinth. After the monument was completed, it was displayed in front of the parliament buildings. On July 31, 1988, to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the abolition of slavery, the statue was unveiled in its permanent home, now called Damon Square or Damon's Park. The plaque embedded in the concrete plinth describes the events of the 1834 revolt. Hugh Tommy Payne, in his book, 10 Days in August 1834, 
described Damon's stand as the continuation of the Guyanese fight against colonialism, which began with our indigenous peoples and continued with our ancestors as they made Guyana their home, a fight that continues to present day. May we always honor Damon who sacrificed his life for freedom and said in his own words, I forgive everybody and I hope I put my trust in Jesus.